What's up everyone and welcome to the sixth tutorial in the series. In this series, or in this video rather, we're going to be discussing flow control. And so in the previous video we talked a little bit about the while loop. We were talking about how while this condition is happening, continue to run this code over and over. And so in this video we're going to do a couple different variations on that so that we can make our code a little bit more interactive so that when certain things happen, we can react to them and respond accordingly. So the first thing we're going to cover is the if statement. And the if statement is kind of similar to the while loop, where you just make a condition and if this happens, then you run that series of code. But with the if statement, you just run it once. You don't continually run it over and over as long as the statement is true. So. The way we're going to start is we're going to do we're going to capture a little bit of input. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I'll explain this in a second. So basically what we're doing is when you type in input it's gonna just pause and wait for the user to input something. So this is the question we're asking them, or the statement rather, and we're saying, please enter an integer. So if we hit F5, then they have time to just go 35 or something like that, and then it finishes the code. What we're doing here is it initially interprets it as text, text data. So if we type 35, so let's just try x plus 7. So we type in 35 and we expect it to be plus 7, which would be 42, but then we get this error because when they're typing in this, it's actually pulling it out as a string rather than an int. So we put this on the front int and it basically converts it to an integer like we're expecting. So then I can type in 35 and it runs successfully. It doesn't throw an error. Now we're going to get into the actual if statement section. So I can do if x is less than 0 then you do a colon and then you have to indent and then this is the code that it's going to run when that condition is true. So now what's going to happen is if x is less than zero or basically if x is negative then it's going to set x to be zero and then it's going to print out saying that the negative was changed to zero. So let's try that. Whoops. I did a single quote instead of a double quote. So let's try negative five. And then it says negative changed to zero. So it triggered our if statement and it ran this code. The next thing we're going to do is an L if. And so basically how this works, it's basically saying else. So if this is not true, then try this one. And this condition has to be true as well. And so when we're doing comparisons, so if we're doing x is equal to 0, then we have to do the double equal sign because the single equal sign is assignment. We're not trying to assign x to be 0. We're checking if x is equal to 0. So then if this case is true, and this if x is not less than 0, then we move on to the next condition. So let's print 0, and it prints 0 correctly. Then we're going to do another L if.
and we can type in one, then it's going to be a single. And then the next condition we're going to work on is else. And so else is a little bit like the rest of them, like we did with elif. Elif basically is an else plus an if. So else is just, I'm going to delete these for a second. So basically else is just, if this is not true, then try this. And then it's going to run this code. So let's say 35 and then it prints more because the if was not true. So else is going to catch anything that this was not true of. So then I'm going to put the elifs back. And so this is basically saying if X is less than zero, do this code. If it's not, try this statement. If x is equal to zero, then do this. But if it's not, try this. And then if it's not that, then anything else goes to the else statement. And then it runs this code. And so we can just test it out 24. And it reaches all the way to the more statement. It tried all of these before it. And it determined none of them were true. And so it went all the way to the more statement. That's going to be it for our sixth tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about four statements.